massage it. I'm trying to pull this up on my other screen here so I can see what you guys are saying. But it might just be... It won't let me. No, here we go. Perfect. Wonderful. All right, welcome to Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. We're doing something a little bit different today. Normally, I would do like a still life, kind of a small painting, but uh, I was having a hard time getting in the mood for that this morning. But I have this old, large thing I need to finish anyway. So I thought we'd work on something bigger today, without a reference. This is an entirely imagined composition. Uh, at some point, I'll probably break out a few references to help me figure out the finer points. Um, in the faces. Uh, and then, yeah, I have a couple of apples here at the bottom. It's sort of a minimal composition. Um, there's still kind of a lot to keep track of. Um, so, yeah, um, I always uh, invite you to paint along with me if you like, whatever you're working on, or something similar, of course, you're welcome to join. Um, otherwise, uh, if you just want to hang out with me for an hour, I think we could all use an hour right now of just kind of taking a minute. Taking a minute for ourselves here, even if just for one hour. There's a whole lot going on right now. It feels a little funny sitting down and painting, but I think it's important. I think it's okay. So first order of business. <clears throat> I'm trying to think where I was the last time I worked on this thing. Um, so one thing that I had been trying to do was it's a little loud. Um, just turn that down. Sorry, apologies. There we go. Okay. Um, one thing I had been trying to do was just kind of establish the anatomy of the faces. At the moment, this is all pretty much just underpainting, um, and uh, I just want to establish kind of the planar changes, the direction of the light. Um, Thing with the apples down here in the shadow at the bottom. We're just trying to create like a hardened sense of light and form. Um, just a little more resolved than what I have. What I have is a little all over the place. So um, one of the first things we'll be doing is going in and cutting in shadows. I, think. I have a dioxazine violet here and I'm gonna mix it with ultramarine. And then canacridone. Magenta, it's a little more red than I want, so throw some more blue in. Um, I don't want this to be a real dark dark, um, but dark enough. How does that look? We're gonna go ahead and make a little test mark here and see how we feel. Yeah, that's too dark. So I'm gonna throw some light magenta in. We'll see what that does for us. That's probably the thing. You know, I was setting up a still life earlier and just like, man, I just, didn't. I had ju I had just got done finishing up two still lives from some past videos uh, last night, and um, just thought it'd be good to do something else. I don't know if anybody else ever gets bored, but I get bored. Sometimes, and I thought we could still get just about as much value out of a piece like this today. Hmm. I'll throw a little more red in that. I don't really actually know if it's a no no or not. I don't think it is. Um, testing your colors on the piece, and heck, they wipe left. We're working on panel today, so no bounce, a uh, little bounce, but not the not the sp springy canvas kind. Um, pushes on. Yeah, that's kind of more the color I envision. I think. 
So it is a little different painting on a panel, I find. It's a worthwhile experience though. So yeah, what are we doing? We're gonna think about shadow. Um, I kind of have the light direction coming from over here. So I'm trying to think about how as the face curves around and around and around and around each time, um, where we're gonna cast hard shadows. Now, it's, this is not a particularly, it's kind of, this is kind of a feels, a feels right. Um, Cause yeah, um, obviously, Thinking about it, that can be a little bit of a headache, but especially from the underneath, um, we're going to have to play around with exactly where this nose is. I'm going to come back to that. I think that's the part that you guys mostly are just seeing uh, glare anyway, so. Alright, so just sort of coming down, bringing in my darks. And if you're just joining us, this is Art Force and I was Artful Connections. My name is John Lufusco. Working on a, an imagined composition today, kind of a larger piece that I've been sitting on that I need to get done. Actually, it's for a client. It's kind of a weirdo project. I was given. An awful lot of freedom with this one, and um, the sketch I came up with was just kind of a bunch of heads, and there's something in the image that just seems powerful and appropriately silly to me. But yeah, I hope you'll join me in making something today if you like. Um, been a lot going on. This weekend, and we can all take an hour for ourselves and just kind of focus on something else for just a moment. Then we can all get back into it. Let's just take a moment this morning. With a piece this size, um, it can be pretty useful to take a step back pretty regularly. Um, You'll also notice I'm painting at arm's length. This is also a really good motion to get used to um, when you're working at scale. Um, so many of my videos we've been doing, we've been doing some small things. Uh, I, I try to paint with my arm with small scale stuff too, but it is hard. It's so easy to get like you know, your fingers right up, right up here on the neck of the brush, and it, 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 it only it can only serve to stiffen the marks. It's a bad habit that I've been doing on on these, and I, I really didn't have been. Um, so yeah, when you take a step back, you have your whole range of motion. I could reach from here to here, all without ever moving. Uh, whereas if I'm in here and I'm just moving my wrist around, you know, how much of a range of motion does that give me? This can be useful for certain aspects of the, like certain moments in production, but particularly when we're just trying to develop an entire piece, all over on the same rate, the same pace. Um, we want more range. And yeah, taking regular steps back will be good. Um, there is no hope of finishing this today. That is not really what we're doing. We're just hanging out and chipping away at it. And that is all right, too. Just building up that history. Building up that history. Alright. Yeah, eventually this piece does get done. I don't really have a deadline on it, but I just, I'm just trying to knock out all the things on my to-do list, because some deadlines are coming up. And I'm not working on those on camera, because I can't share those. Less the person who ultimately will be receiving them sees them. Um, can't have that. Can't spoil the surprise. But 
Taylor already knows what he's getting, so I can show this one. Let's see. And actually, um, <laughs> having the phone filming is kind of neat because it kind of makes it easier to take a step back. It makes the image so much smaller. And since I can, I only have about five feet here to step back. Um, it, it, it's pretty helpful <laughs> to have a phone if you're working in a small space and working large. Having a phone, take a photo, or maybe or do what I'm doing here, where you're you know you have a film, whatever. You can always go and look at the screen, but it'll really help you step back, um, create that distance that you can't get physically. Oh, we all know this song. I kind of like working large. It, it uses up a lot of materials, but it's, um... It's just so nice to have, like, all of this room to play. I've been working small a lot lately, so this is a nice change of pace. But I, I confess to you, now that I'm, like, here and I'm doing it, um, I'm, like, noticing a little discomfort. Um, in me, working at this size, so this is good that we're doing this, because some of the stuff I have to work on is getting bigger. And, frankly, I, I had a lot of instructors who, who always pushed for size, work bigger, work bigger, work bigger, so today we're making them happy, we're working bigger, and if you're at home and you can work bigger, I encourage you to do so, too, at an hour later. The only bummer about painting on panels, you don't get that cool, um, scratchy sound that we all love so well. So there's one thing I think I'm going to change, and it's sort of a shame because I'm going to have to erase some parts of the heads, but I'm noticing it now, and everything is still so loose, that we may as well just do this now. So I'm mixing up some color with the knife, because the knife's just an easier way to mix up a lot of color, and I kind of want a lot of it. Um, ooh! Zinc white. Zinc white. Let's do. All right. There goes the zinc. up a nice light pink here. I've combined my light magenta and my brilliant pink. Both colors by Holbein. They're a Japanese company. Um, not the cheapest paints, but they do have some accent colors I just really like using. Um, light magenta being one of them. Brilliant pink being another. I haven't messed with their whole collection, but these two colors I'm kind of hooked on, so I like to have at least a little bit at my disposal for any given piece. And obviously with a piece that's basically just going to be um, a range of, I think we're just probably going to keep it to the pinks and the blues for the most part. Um, yeah, so what I've been noticing that's been driving me crazy is that we have these really nice, like, everything kind of feels like it's laying on top of everything until right down here these heads get kind of floaty. So I think I'm just going to move the ground up. That would be the easiest way to fix this. Move the ground up and just kind of pinch these faces together a little tighter. Um, and the best way to do that, honestly, is to just erase this whole bottom part. So we're going to do that. And we're going to be repainting some heads today. Because yeah, we want probably... switch to a brush here in a second, but I just kind of want to get my shape establish an angle here. But yeah, I don't paint with the knife very often. But it's nice for making big decisions really fast, like where the heck am I drawing my line? Um, I have a clean brush, let's switch to a clean brush. 
And let's grab a stool. Because we're working low. Closer to the underpainting color, just so that some of that still shines through, just like with the other heads. Um, it's kind of an orangey red, so that's what we're gonna do. Let's mix up a color that's sort of an orangey red, and I think that's a little more the shape we want. Um, Yeah, this guy at the bottom, I feel like he ought to be kind of squished. He's got all these other heads on top, and I do want to some sense. I want it to be sort of floaty and a little bit dreamlike, but I want there to be some sense of weight. Um, this is kind of a balance I want there that wasn't there with that initial drawing. So um, that's okay. We keep it loose so that we can make quick changes like this. Um, yeah, okay, so then I had my shadow color ready, and since I already have that ready, let's go ahead and just carve it in. Right there. I might have to move my apples around a bit, but I'm not going to worry about that right this second. Come back to that. Cool. Now I have all this mess down here, so let's kind of... Too dark. It is too dark. So then we're gonna throw some zinc white into it. And zinc white is nice because most everybody's heard of titanium white, but zinc white's nice because it's um it's a little weaker. It doesn't um, tint as hard, which um would be nice if you're trying to use um it'll, it'll kind of extend your color a bit. So. You know, just putting a lot more material there without killing the hue. This thing about titanium white is it tends to kill the color even building. And the zinc white doesn't do that as much. Ooh, that's a hair. Get that off. Oh, that's from my it's mustache hair. Um yeah, we're just gonna kinda clean this up. quite like this anymore, so um, I confess to you I'm making this up as I go in a pretty big way, like the order I'm doing things, and like what I'm developing when I'm developing it, like I don't really know when to do that. Um, you know, I'm just trying to apply the normal rules I use, and I think they'll be just fine. Um, I anticipate a lot of push and pull, especially with all the imagined elements. This is going to be kind of a, a game of, um, feels right. Two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. Pretty good chance of there being a fair bit of that. Let's 
that more of the color? Yeah, it should be a bit closer. This other one was too bright. And I might do kind of a bright thing around them later, but for now I don't want that. Um, yeah. And, um, <laughs> in a pretty big way, this head didn't have to change that much. Um, although, I do want his chin to take a slightly different shape right down there. None of these heads have ears. That is normally a thing you want, but I, I decided that they're not getting ears. <clears throat> Because they don't need ears. Um, I feel like they look a little more like um, peculiar objects if they don't have ears, and that is kind of a vibe that I'm interested in cultivating. It's taking these human like heads. They're almost apple y colored, is kind of the goal. pink jelly. That's sort of what I think in the end I'm going to be going for. They'll be a little shinier when I'm all done. Um, and so like as I go, part of what I'm going for is like almost a dampness. Like if you touched them they'd be sticky. That's what I want. that one um how to talk about this so you know every time that you have a change in the plane so this forehead comes out and it cuts in, cut, it pops back out with the cheekbone, it'll cut in. That's all that's happening in some more subtle ways throughout. Um, and yeah, it helps if you've just painted the face a few times. Um, when I did my first sketch for these, I had looked up baby pictures, of like kind of scrunched up baby faces. But that's what made up my initial sketch. I don't know if I'm going to keep that as strongly in the final. But that was kind of um, thought initially. Right now they do look like um, at least adult heads. Um, I don't feel particularly strongly about whether they should be male or female or anything like that. I'm not really worried about that. I'm not going to probably think about it too much. I kind of think it doesn't matter. So... Or I guess I think that it matters that it doesn't matter. How about that? That's what matters. Yeah, this color's gonna get all gooped up. There we go. That's not so far off, is it? Back to our shadows. Yup. Something like that. I'm just thinking about all the places where the face turns. And I think we're gonna pull out another color. 
Oh, I think while we're at it. Um, we're gonna make a, a light. A lighter color, and that's gonna have some zinc in it. If you're just joining us, this is Art Force. I'm Artful Connections. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I'll be our mentor today. And we're just kind of working on a big imagined piece today. No reference, just kind of let and go a little bit. See what comes out. Still being mindful. You'll notice I have new gloves this week. It is very exciting. They have a butterfly and uh, flowers on them. Can't find the little gloves anymore. These are probably better. They're thicker and they're a bit more reusable. They don't tear as easy. I probably should have been using them all along, especially since they have a butterfly on them. Um, really, it couldn't have been a better fit. I sort of do want the heads to be a little darker now that I'm working on them. I might change my mind on that later. We have we have time to change our mind. Um, but I do kind of want their noses to be, at least their noses to be kind of like extra red. Like sunburnt or snickly. Uh, especially since I do intend for them to be kind of oozing in the end. To be sort of oozy. drooling and oozing on each other, kind of playing into that jelly-like quality. I didn't claim we wouldn't be working on something kind of weird today. We, we are working on something kind of weird today. But. We gotta keep it weird sometimes. Time I made a lot more imagery like this, and in my mind they were um, sort of mental landscapes. Is how I thought of them. Super non-literal painting of a particular feeling of being awake. Um, I don't know if anybody else is. But surely everybody has this sensation of, of having a, you know, when you're of two minds about something, or more than two minds, if you're not sure where you stand, or it seems like you're dealing with a whole chorus of voices that all make up you. I think that's part of what this is about. Although. Um, Dali never liked to talk too much about what his stuff was about, and I think the reason for that was that he wasn't really sure either. He just knew it was important, and I think that's kind of where I come out on a lot of surrealism. It's like, well, I don't exactly know what it means, you know, but, but the, the, you know, the image occurs to you, and you're like, shoot, I'll make that. Let's see. That sounds, that sounds worthwhile. Even if I haven't decided why it's worthwhile yet. I mean, heck, if you had words for it, you would have written a book. But we're using visual language today. I'm getting some highlights. It's almost too bright. <laughs> it's actually way too bright. That's way too bright. Closer, I think, 
Thoughts are noisy though. That's something I'm noticing. Creaky creak. Yeah, and if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to chime in. Uh, if you are working on something today at the end, and you uh, you want to share it, we'd love to see it. Please do post it in the comments below. But I get that it can just be kind of nice to tune out and just watch or just listen or just pop in and out as the stream goes on. Been there. I get it. Yeah, this is such a strange face down here. We're going to go ahead and throw some color. Yeah, I am using my phone screen a fair bit to kind of help me decide what the heck am I doing here. Um, yeah, it's, isn't it? Well, 2020 is half over now. What a what a year. They're not getting less weird. They're not, they're not, um, they're not getting less intense. It was like being alive in a pretty important chapter in history, you know, although maybe everybody feels that way. Regardless, it's nice to take a minute. something yeah and I, I barely had this thing past sketching stage I think we're still sketching now um, we're still sketching now and that's okay this is the drawing part we're still drawing um, as for the size uh, we're looking at I think it's two feet across and four feet tall. I think it's just four feet. <clears throat> I worked in a gallery there for a bit until recently and um, something I learned from that gig is that at least for the clients they had, size was um, did help with sales. Having a bigger piece helped with sales. And most most ideas will scale up pretty nice. Um, there's something about a life size head or a life size um, portrait or still life that just makes it a little more powerful than when it's, when it's teeny tiny. Um, it's just kind of a natural response, a human response to scale. Although there's plenty of tremendously remarkable. It's a different, different kind of awe, though, when you come across like a really intricate, wonderful, tiny painting compared to a a large painting. It's just, it's just a different response, and I guess it's just what response do you want? That like delicate appreciation of something like really fine and delicate, or do you, or like you trying to like fill a room? with an idea. I wouldn't say one's better or worse than the other, but they are different. They are, they're worth, it's, wor it's worth considering whenever you like to say, like, how big do I want to make this thing? Well, what do I want it to say? What do I want it to feel like coming across it? Appreciate you guys humoring me, letting me work on this one today instead of a smaller, more bite-sized piece. Um, it's kind of nice working big. I think we want. I think we want to shave this guy in a bit. So something else to consider. And I'm, I'm realizing I'm losing track of this a little bit. Is like that roundness. We want kind of each head to have this sort of like 
ball quality. Which means there should be a, a brightest point that's going to slowly fade as we curve away. So like this right here is too uniform, it's too bright. My light direction is down here, so this should be catching the light more so than this, which means I need to come in with a kind of a mid-tone. And I'm going to start killing some of this color in here. And this is kind of a more robust brush, I'm just going to get in here and just start killing it. Just make a big decision and just start to... Mute that. All right. Yeah, and even just that little bit, and we're gonna, we'll we'll find some nuance in here as this thing develops. But um, but that's something that's gonna be important is making sure that we have like a consistent right spot cutting down, and furthermore that we have shadows between each one. shape should the shadow take? It's going to be kind of a funny thing to figure out, but we're going to just sort of give it a vague facey shape. It's a technical term, a facey shape. While also considering that the shadow is on a curved surface. Just like that, it's kind of a cool effect already, just in these heads here. I've already got kind of a, a new thing happening. How do we like that? Let's take a step back. Looking on the camera here. Getting there. Getting there, getting there. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I have another 20 hours at least on this. But that's okay. As long as it turns out cool. Well, I've heard it said that if half of what you make isn't crap, you're not making enough. I don't know if half of what I make is crap or not. It might be. If I'm lucky, it is. I'm trying to make enough. Well, I think a photographer said that. Which is a little bit different. But I think I, th I, th I, think I take their meaning they because I can't remember who the person was yeah cool I like that my floors kind of join in with the music too to my just my weight. Whoosh. Yeah, and actually, this shadow probably does start to extend over here. I thought I'd have to move the apples, but I don't really hate where they are relative to the heads. So, let's just do that. Zip. much drama happening on our panel today is the last couple of weeks. 
in part because I'm just a little timid about this piece. And I don't really know why. I think just because it's been staring at me for a while. I started this one, I want to say early last year. Um, really started it in earnest for early last year and then and then I got caught up doing other things. This is the danger of telling somebody no deadline. Especially a serial procrastinator. about 20 minutes left. If you are just joining us, Art Force Iowa's Artful Connections with what you're watching. My name is Jonathan Fusco. I am your artist mentor today. And today we are working on an imagined composition. No references yet. I might work some in later, but not today, probably. And we're just kind of Figuring out this piece we've started some time ago. I do invite you to paint along with me, draw along with me, whatever you've got at your disposal. If you are making art along with me, we'd love to see it in the comments below. make it later, we still want to see it in the comments below. What I'm getting at is the comments below want your art. Yes, they do. So you don't want to be too flippant about human faces. Um, which is one reason why I'm moving so slowly. Because, yeah, they're going to be a little odd looking. I want them to look a little odd, maybe a little uncanny, but, but they still need to look fairly natural as well. And the human eye has a real knack for faces. Like, um, it's a lot easier to goof up painting a mountain. anybody noticing. But if you make a goof on a face, even children will notice, you know, it's just one of those things that we develop really quickly. So it's worth slowing down a little. Keep it loose, move your arm, not your wrist. steps. The head is often considered to have four sides. Um, we're pretty used to, I'm checking on the camera here to see what you guys can see. Yeah, so this is a pretty good head to make this example. So you have your your side, your front plate, and then your side plate, and then there's the back side. And um, these do have kind of hard boundaries. I'm exaggerating them here for our purposes. But like, uh, this front plate should be a different color from this. Um, it just should. Now, one thing I'm noticing though is that that kind of makes this look a little funny, so I'm going to change that a little bit. while I have this brush out. The fan brush is kind of nice for steering. Steering wet paint. 
uh, I know some folks do a lot of painting with the fan brush itself. I haven't gotten real comfortable painting with it yet, but I admire it and I have seen what you can get done with it and it is pretty, pretty sick. So, someday, I think. And just in the interest of jumping around some more, well, I'm going to throw a few more marks right here, but then we're going to jump up to the... Jump up to the top here. Because I don't like, I don't really like that shadow. That's too much. So we're moving that. And again, um, we're thinking about that plane. So I think this whole thing might get darkened. Um, when I'm all done, I might bring back a highlight on that, where the brow kind of goes whoop, you know, comes out, catches light like a shelf before sinking back in. Um, but for now, broad strokes, um, just kind of pushing some of this back a little to help create a little more. Um, intention, um, direction, although I'm saying that while I've decided I pushed that too far back and I'm actually going to, just before I forget, I am going to push it a little bit the other way. Where my paper towels at? yellow. I'm actually going to throw a little medium in here. Medium is just the mixture of the linseed and the um, gamsol. Okay, and we're just going to... Oof, not quite right. Not quite right. I was just wrapping up a painting that had a lot of yellow in it, so I had like all this yellow. Actually, the plan was to do a banana uh, and, a, and an orb today that I have in my knickknack collection um, to help use up some of this yellow. But I thought, hey, I could just do that on this painting. This painting needs a lot of yellow. I've been using it as a bit of a mixer. What happens? Let's just see what happens. I'm just curious if we kind of bring that out. Mm, how do we feel about that? Mixed feelings. Not, not resolved. too caught up in that. I'm going to move on for now. We'll come back. Just keep going around the clock here. Right on. And we'll need a little more progress than I thought we would, in truth. Um, but yeah, this is a slow moving piece. So if you've stuck it out with me this whole time, I appreciate you. If you haven't, I appreciate you too. Thanks for popping up. I don't know if we'll return to this piece or not in the future. Artful connections, it kind of depends how things go the next couple weeks, finishing up some other stuff. I only have like so much room, I can only have so many pieces in here at once, and this one's just been here for forever. I'm getting 
something happening to it is good. I don't know if you guys can tell how small a room this is, but it's kind of a small room. I have a few places I can stash pieces around the house, but I try not to... I have roommates, so I try not to impose too hard on the public space. Um, with my storage. Especially given that they're both artists, too. Right on. I like this space. This is my favorite one so far. Um, yeah, but it's pure accident how they all ended up looking. I just, I just kind of started making faces in slightly different shapes to just sort of see which ones I like, which ones I didn't. But I do like that they all have a little personality all their own. None of them are twins or too similar. Like I don't, I don't really want that. I don't think that'd be very interesting to look at. And I don't think it would capture the feeling I want from this. Different faces, different voices. This one at the top is going to catch more light than everybody else below, so this should ultimately be the brightest head. Doing a lot of squinting, especially with again with large pieces, it can help to squint because it sort of turns everything into its a softer version of its real self. Stepping back, squinting, these are all tricks for working uh, real up close to something kind of on the bigger side. Um, I can't work much bigger than this in part because it would a tiny room. Um, but when you get like real big, I think. Um, you kind of start gritting things out and um, or using a projector. I mean, there's all kinds of tricks when you start scaling up. We don't have to get too tricky today. Treat every head similarly up and down. Okay. Yeah, and I want. Napthal Scarlet, or is it? Napthal Red, that's right. Napthal Red is my favorite red for kind of that yellowy, like almost yellow orange vibe. Um, 
I used to really count on uh, cadmium, but in the end, I find cadmium tends to turn things brown. Like naphthol, for my purposes, naphthol is the way. And I think it's less toxic. I mean, I'm not going to eat it, but I think, I think it's also a little less toxic, which is good. Which counts for something if you're going to be handling it. Again, we're just kind of just refining. Again, I'm trying not to get too caught up in any one head for too long um, for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm just not sure yet um, where a lot of this stuff needs to land. And if you're not sure, there's no sense pushing it too hard. You just kind of feel out because if you make if you push one head too far. Okay, and you run out of color and you have to remix it, it'll be hard to match all throughout. And the goal is to keep everything unified. And one way to do that is to treat it all fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, that doesn't work for me. Let's actually wipe that. Whoa. Actually, move that mouth up about right here. <clears throat> and then we're gonna do something else. I'm gonna try something else. I'm trying to figure out what the heck I was thinking. I painted this head um, almost a year ago, so I don't remember exactly where my head was at, what I was planning with it, so... I don't know exactly where I wanted the nose. But I think it should go right there. I think that's the nose. What do you think? I think that's the way. Shadow color again. texture and in fact there are little nubbins and things I'm gonna need to scrape off but I'll do that off camera because it's gonna be kind of tedious but I just I don't want I don't want um yeah I don't want I don't want that that little guy I don't know if you know you can see it but I don't want it I want it off And it's mostly just from like dried paint on my palette and it's broken up into little pieces and it goes to show you really ought to keep a cleaner palette than I've been keeping. So yeah, a clean palette won't give you those little nubbins of dried paint. And I think, just check the clock, I think we're out of time, gang. This has been fun. I hope it's been fun for you and rewarding for you. If you were making art along with me, please do post what you've got in the 
comments. And thank you for taking a, a break from everything today. And joining me for just this hour to take a moment inward and focus on something you can control directly. Make yourself a little more ready for the world outside. Take care of your world inside so you can help the world outside. All right. With that, happy Monday, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe out there.